Hello and welcome. I am Sumedha and on this episode of the Daily Roundup, we give you a glimpse of some of the most important stories and the latest developments in the country and around the world that we report about here at NewsClick. Amid the tensions between India and Pakistan, Kashmir is likely to be the area which is going to be the worst affected if the situation continues to get heated up. A field reporter spoke to the locals about the warlike situation that India and Pakistan are heading towards. A local of Naushad Karalpura, Muhammad Ramzar Sofi, was an eyewitness of the 1965 Indo-Pak war and his village was highly affected by the war. Ramzan recalls how the gory memories of the war still haunt him. He tells our reporter that all the houses and the cow sheds in the village were turned into an ammunition store. Within no time, all houses were destroyed with the bombing as the villagers stood and watched the destruction from a distance. The locals are constantly reiterating that if solutions have to be sought, they have to be sought through peaceful talks. Aerial strikes or any other attacks won't lead to any solution. Let these statements make us understand the effects of war on civilians, especially in areas that are the worst hit. When outcomes such as these, no country can opt for war. In the aftermath of the Pulwama terror attack, sports has also taken a major hit in the valley. India's National Football League, the I-League, had to be shifted out of Srinagar to Delhi, keeping in mind the safety of the athletes and the fans. The Real Kashmir Football Club, the first from the state to play at the highest level in the Indian football, will play their last home game against East Bengal at New Delhi's Jawaharlal Nehru Stadium on Thursday. The Minerva Punjab, based in Chandigarh, has also refused to play in Srinagar on Feb 18th after the Pulwama attack. We spoke to the Real Kashmir coach, David Robertson. Take a look at what he had to say about the situation of football in the valley. We've always got a good mentality, you know, we've, we've had some hurdles to overcome all season and last season and the players are pretty adaptable and whatever's thrown at them, they, they seem to come up and, and do well and, you know, overcome any hurdles. So there's, there's no issue. It's, obviously we'd like to have played in uh, TRC, but obviously that's not possible. So, um, you know, we can't complain. We just come in, we're playing in a nice venue, so we'll go and enjoy it. In international news, a vast majority of the people in Cuba have voted for a new constitution. They have ratified the new socialist constitution in Cuba after 60 years. The majority in Cuba has ratified the new socialist constitution 60 years after revolutionaries defeated the US-supported Batista regime in what came to be known as the 26th of July movement. Cubans are preparing to reaffirm their faith in the values of the revolution. Earlier in 2018, a special committee headed by Raul Castro prepared a new draft of the constitution to address the changing socio-economic realities of the country and the world, keeping intact the socialist character of the republic and the role of the communist party in the society. It aims to modernize the state and its legal structure and to reaffirm the rights and the guarantees of the citizens. It was approved by the National Assembly on July 23rd and presented before the Cuban citizens for their suggestions. That's all that we have for you today on this episode of the Daily Roundup. To follow these stories and many more, log on to our website www.newsclick.in, subscribe to our channel on YouTube and follow us on Facebook. Thank you for watching.